going. Got some uh, rain coming in the next two days. I'm kind of getting the precursors of that rolling in ahead of it. Jim's knee was, Jim's trick knee was acting up, I think, or something. Not really, but we've been talking about this storm for a week now. I'm gonna move some of these extra materials out of here. Uh, the previous caretaker built the dog run. So these are some of the extras. So we're gonna get all this to a holding area. I'm gonna use the tractor to yank out this massive root here and clean up some of this debris, load this stuff up. You got trees and uh, foliage like we have here. It's a lot of work to clean it up. So we got big equipment to make that happen easily. So we're gonna pick up a few collection piles we had stage, take them out to the back, and get them get them put away before the storm comes. Try to keep the yard as clean and free of debris as possible. That way when the winds come in, whip all these leaves out of here, whoosh, right on down to the valley. Good luck with that. Makes it nice and easy for us. So says Jim, following the orders of the main man. Main man knows what he's doing. So uh, this is my before. This is my before. I've been not taking very many before shots of work and then realizing only after I've completed half of it that it would have been nice to have both sides. But work's got to get done. We don't got time for videos sometimes. We just got to get the work done. Take a video later. Got another big pile there. A little bush over there. So we're trying to get all this done today. We got another pile of uh, wood poles and things. We're going to get those staged and counted. Kind of inspect them and uh, see how many we can make for poles out in the field. We've got one that's definitely got to get replaced soon. It's totally broken in half. And we've got a few we've got our eyes on. Uh, so we're going to do those all at once. So we're going to see how many poles we have in, in hand and schedule those for replacement. Anyway, we'll check back in after we're done cleaning it up. So I spotted this down line on the rig. I was walking up to it. It seems to be a oil filler or bleed off of the transfer case here in the back. This seems to be a cap. It seems to have had a clip that's broken. So I think this probably clipped it to some other wire or something and kept it free from falling. You have to get that checked out because this vehicle is typically hitting the brushy areas and I want to get this snagged on stuff like bob wire or whatever the other stuff we've been picking up and uh, end up damaging the tranny or something that'd be horrible. So I'm going to talk to Jim about where this should really be at and get it there and we'll get back to work. So we're adding tractor hydraulic fluid. That's what you're saying? Right. And the difference being that the tracked hydraulic fluid, it runs the PTO and the transmission yeah. for the tractor, yeah. so it needs to be special lubricant. Yeah. Not just your standard. Not just your standard hydraulic fluid. It's got to be treated for gear work, too. So. Clean out the mud daubers. Really? <laughs> and as I said, it's just for three brands of stuff here. Chevron 100, 1000 THF, transmission and torque fluid. Tractor hydraulic fluid, yeah, right there on the top. Cool. So where'd you get a reading? Is there a dipstick or something yeah, for this? Yeah, right there. Okay, so there's the dipstick. Yeah. And how many liters is this whole cr crank hold, do you think? Don't even tell me. Don't even ask questions like that. <laughs> I have no idea. Like how much are we expecting to pour in here right now? Oh, no, probably less than a gallon. Okay. I would imagine. Okay. It just because it's, it's reading low on the, it's reading low on the stick right now. See, it's barely, oh, wow. barely touching the stick, so we're probably going to put at least a, a gallon, I would think. Okay, yeah, that's a good ballpark. Yeah. Just trying to get a feel. So we have a five gallon bucket, or whatever. Yeah, I never really thought about it that much, I guess. <laughs> until it, it stops. We filled it until it was, was full of it. Yeah. You got, you got a little rat friend? Mm. I've got several rats. I don't know. It's doing pretty good. Yeah. So Jim was talking about they blew a hose. You replaced the hose? Yeah. You replaced these two hoses. Yeah. Lost some fluid. We put a probably three gallons in to compensate some like he said he had uh, pressure washes prior to that, so you can see uh, just a little bit of oil really collects the dust and stuff. Whereas no oil 
spare any. Is that good? You just okay. Plan B: side load. Let's take the freak off. Back it up. So I'm even with the. Uh... I'm not going in this gully. Rolling up the window, Jim's laughing. <laughs> Grab a pitchfork and help out here. Or, or Jim's gonna use the tractor to just smash it all down so it all fits. Another method saves time. Effective. All right, let's get this done. It's gonna last this debris out here. Pumping the final little bits. After shot. Three truckloads. Three truckloads of this today. Two truckloads of bob wire and fence posts yesterday. All right, so we're cleaning up more of this scrub brush on the side of the road here. 
opened up this culver. We want to get in here and get this cleaned out um, before the next range. So they're coming tomorrow. So we got these bushes out of here. We're going to rake all this stuff out of here. Make sure these passageways are clear. Uh, we're going to go in there later with the backhoe and, and dredge all that out and make a nice uh, sediment pond on that side of the gate there. Just kind of wanted to cut this down preemptively to get in. We had some pretty, pretty good growth stuff. We had two big bushes here, which kind of protected this. So uh, we don't really want wildlife and everything falling in here, which was an issue, I guess. So we want to put posts possibly to protect or note this so people like Jim, for instance, don't fall in. Much like how this one over here has this bush kind of protecting it, but not on it. So perhaps we'll do the same thing over here. We'll put a bush in front and protect it, but not be on it. Uh, same thing with the little rock wall and stuff. We want to get this filled in also. So it's pretty much the finished cleanup of this lower field here. After that little rainstorm, we had some regrowth. So I went and knocked that down just to not give it any false hope. I uh, still got the same burn pile going. And we cleared out a lot of the, the heavier stuff. Brought that off to, uh, beside the bolt barn so you won't see any of that stuff. And we'll check in later. We had a little incident today where it's always nice to know your neighbors. Check in on that. So this afternoon, we're clearing stuff and Spence, uh, Reed's assistant, the guy behind our, this property, uh, texts him and says, hey, you got a cow out. And look, there goes some quail. Just shooting through the fence. We got some cow out. So Jim comes down, he finds him just on the other side of this fence here, on the vineyard side, and he manages to get him in. There's three of them. Manages to get them in. And before he can open up that gate and push them through, they take off into the gully over there. So then they're gully for a few hours. And then he sees that there's a few cows kind of hanging out over here that are like looking around like, hey, where do our buddies go? And so Jim starts looking and he sees, sure enough, boom. Got some low bob wire going on here. Cow just decided they want to go over. There's really a couple cows jumped the fence here and found their way just outside the gate. And Stopped them from getting too far away, but uh, definitely going to put this section of fence on priority repair like tomorrow morning because um, now we know the cow know that they can get out like this. So we need to remind them they can't. All right, so that was our fun little incident today. So it pays into the neighbors without that text. Um, you probably, brought, you know, might have been another hour to two hours before we noticed and those cow could have been in the vineyard. I think in all honesty, we're, Sarah and I were about to leave for King City for some chores, but um, you know, not always that lucky. So gotta make sure we keep these things tight. Just enjoying another beautiful sunset.